chapter 8. I've told it many times here before. I have a kind of a nightly routine where I go out. I live out in the country. You make the corner from my road. They paved it several years ago when a politician moved out in that area somewhere. Around the corner, it's still gravel. The same road I walked as a boy. I still walk that road at night. The road is dark. A lot of nephews and nieces. My brother lives to the left of me. My other brother lives to the right of me off the family farm and nieces and nephews down the road. Uh, my dad never did like a security light. He said he didn't want a light that he couldn't turn on. And our family kind of followed that. We kind of like the night sky when there's no light pollution to hide that sky. And nobody has security lights there. If they want a light on, they'll turn a porch light on. But every night, I try to make it every night. I walk up and down that road and I get alone with God. And as you look around, you see the glory of God everywhere, everywhere you look, every turn. And you start studying about the wonder and the amazement and the greatness of God's creation. And it does something to you. You, you, Then after a while you look at all the glory and the order and the symmetry and the balance and the perfectness of all his creation. And then when you look at yourself, it takes you back a little bit. In Psalms 8 and verse 3 the Bible says, When I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Everywhere you look, you'll see the glory of God, whether it's daytime or nighttime. The Bible says in Psalms 19:1, said, uh, "The heavens declare the glory of God, and the earth showeth his the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night." Showeth knowledge. There's no speech, it says, nor language where their voice is not heard. And, and as I walk down that, that, that lonely, dark uh, country road late at night, I'm surrounded by the glory of God. As I drove to church this morning, I'm surrounded all around me with the glory of God's creation and his goodness and his perfectness. Everything of praising God and giving glory to God, the flowers pointing to God, the the leaves turning their leaves up to give God glory, all of God's creation. And I walk down that that, that road at night uh, uh, to my south. I I look and I'll see coming out my driveway, I'll see the, the red planet, the planet Mars, and off to the right of it is Saturn. You can usually see both of those this time of year. And then Jupiter. Last night I went out a little early and Jupiter was still above the horizon off to my right. And then you looked uh, to the left and, and just barely coming above the horizon is the moon starts to come up. And, uh, you know, the moon is a type of the church. The moon is a dead planet. It has no light of itself. It has to reflect the light of the sun. The only light that comes from the moon is a type of the church is the light of the sun. The only light that the church has is the light from the sun of righteousness. Malachi calls it the S-U-N, capital S-U-N of righteousness. He said, but unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. The glory of God. Uh, Psalms 19, 4, their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he hath set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. Bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. Hey, you can't escape the glory of God. You can't get around it. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, everywhere you turn. If I face to the north, I, at night I see the Big Dipper and, and uh, follow that up to the Polaris, the North Star. And Job 26, Job said, He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Uh, Psalm 48, too, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Then to the right of Polaris, off uh, the seven sisters, they're called Pleiades. Job spoke of Pleiades. 
in Amos 5, 8, it says, Seeketh him, seek him that maketh the seven stars. That's Pleiades, the seven sisters we call them, spoken of by Job. And Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth him out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Orion, there's a thing called the belt of Orion. You can't see, right now it's hidden from the night sky. A little later on in wintertime, it, you, it'll be where we can see it here. The old coon hunters know that because the belt of that Orion is shaped kind of like a kite. And the tail of that kite always points due south. It's one of the uh, star clusters along with Polaris that we use to find yourself out of the woods whenever you get lost. Anybody's coon hunted much, there's come a time you got lost. I had a neighbor one time, we went coon hunting, and he said, Tom, I've just got a natural sense of direction. That's how he said, I got a natural sense of direction. We had daylight before we ever got out of them woods. <laughs> but there's groups of stars that you use to help find your way. Uh, anyway, as you're out there and uh, uh, you see the wonder and the glory of God, and it's everywhere. You know, when God finished his creation, he looked it all over and he said, it's good. It's good. You can't blame God for the craziness of the world we live in today because the world today is not the world as God created it. When he created it, he said it's good. Another place he said it's very good. The Bible said that God made man upright, but he sought out many inventions. Everything giving praise and glory of God. Everything except one little part. You look at all the wonder and the glory of God, his holiness, his goodness. Psalms 93, the Lord reigneth, verse 1, the Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waters of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Holy, wonderful, beautiful for situation, the Bible says. All-powerful, all-knowing. That's the God we serve. Man, if it ever grips you, the kind of God that we serve and his power and his holiness and his wonder, it, it, it'll amaze you. Psalm 96, 11, and let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Full of grace and truth. That's God with God. All the glory with God, all the goodness, the righteousness, and the holiness. What a God. And there I stand. God made man upright, but he sought out many inventions. I look at all that, and then I see myself. Job said, how then? Can a man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of woman? He said, what is man that he should be clean, and, and he which is born of woman that he should be righteous? I saw within myself that I was not holy, I was not good, I was not clean in his sight. I needed the imputed righteousness of somebody else. I couldn't make it on my own. Isaiah said that all for all of our, our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. It had to come from somewhere outside of me. With God, all the glory, all the goodness, all the righteousness, all the holiness. Then I looked at myself, and there I stand. I'm a mess. I'm a sinner. I'm a rebel and prideful. I saw the glory of God. And I heard about the goodness of God. When I was a boy, as a lost boy, I saw myself without hope. One day and without God in the world, I sweated it out for three weeks under conviction and knew that if I died, I'd split hell wide open. I knew I was a mess. I knew I was a... God brought me to that point. His goodness showed me that I was a mess. The Bible says, for the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. 
I saw God and his goodness and his holiness and I saw myself in relationship to him and I was a mess. I was sinful. I was a rascal. I, was, I knew I would split hell wide open. I knew that the justice of God would convict me, condemn me to hell. I didn't want God's justice. When what I needed, and, and, and I, I knew that God was holy, and I knew that I wasn't holy, but I knew justice would send me to hell. What I needed went beyond his seeing his glory, went beyond seeing his goodness. I needed his grace. Not just his glory and his goodness, but I needed grace. And along with that grace, I needed mercy. I cried and begged for mercy. Where could I find it? Uh, how could I reach it? When could I see it? Uh, who could show it to me? God's grace and his mercy. Uh, like the Philippian jailer, uh, uh, then, then one day that, that piano started to play. I was in church on a Sunday morning in Romeoville, Illinois, and that piano began to play just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and my heart had been full for three weeks. And I found myself, I don't remember the walk down the aisle, I don't remember it all. I just remember finding myself at that side of the altar crying out to God. Like the Philippian jailer, I fell down on my face and said, What must I do to be saved? I needed mercy. I was unholy, I was ungodly, I was unworthy, I was unclean, I was vile, I was self-serving, self-indulging. I was helpless to save myself. Oh, my friends might have thought I was pretty cool, but I knew I was a mess. I had absolutely nothing to commend me to a holy God. Nothing. He's so high you can't get over him. He's so low you can't get under him. He's so wide you can't get around him. The song says you got to go in by the door. My, my, my. I didn't want the law. I couldn't keep it. The law couldn't help me because I couldn't keep the law. I didn't want justice because it, it would sentence me to death and to hell. I didn't want that. What I needed, what I wanted, what I prayed for and hoped for was God's grace and God's mercy. I needed Jesus Christ. My, I, I soon found out and I began to believe God's word that my only hope for salvation was in a Savior, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what I needed. I needed the love of God manifested toward me. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us. That means it's in our direction. It's available to us. It's, it gives you opportunity to get saved. Man, what a thing. For anyone, any one of us, for me to have an opportunity, for God to open that door, to give me an opportunity to go to heaven. Man, how many, how many opportunities are lost with us? Opportunities to serve, opportunities to do something for God, and we pass it by. We don't have time for it today. Opportunities. Can you imagine those children at the Red Sea? Uh, God parted the waters and made a place of dry land. They've got all the world and the Egyptians behind them, all Pharaoh's army behind them. God parts the sea, so he made a way. He made, he made an opportunity for them to escape. What if a fellow said, well, I just don't feel like going today. Man, how blessed are we that God opened the door to you. The Jews were amazed and said they'd found that, that, God, uh, that God had granted repentance to the Gentiles. He first came to the Jew. The Bible says he came into his own, and his own received him not. They rejected him. Then it says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The door is open to you. The door is open to you for salvation. The door is open to you for service. The door opportunity is there to sing. The opportunity is there for whatever talent and gift that you have to do for God's glory. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that God would, would, would allow me, would honor me, would, would bless me to do anything for him. I don't deserve anything. What I deserve is hell, but thank God for his mercy. 
He gave me an opportunity. I saw it and I took it and I'm saved today. Going to heaven, going to live in eternity. I've got a home prepared. My, my, my. But God commendeth his love toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, I am the door of the sheep. He is the door. So, so high you can't get over him, so low you can't get under him, so wide you can't get around him, you've got to go in at the door. Jesus said, I am the door. If any man uh, enter in any other way, he's a robber and a thief. I'm the door of the sheep. Paul told that Philippian jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Didn't say might be, said maybe. Said didn't say there's a good chance. He said thou shalt be saved. Belief, that uh, embracing from the heart, uh, that salvation doctrine of the blood of Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost and I'm reaching out to you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you uh, were buried according to the scriptures and raised again the third day. I believe that and, and I'm reaching out to receive that precious gift of salvation. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. A lot of you know about him, you've heard about him, you've, you've heard preachers talk about him, but you've never known him. Not knowing about him, but knowing him experientially. My man, Paul told that jailer, believe. You got to put, you know what happens? You got to, like Naaman, uh, you need to step away from your pride, step away from uh, your self righteousness, step away from your reputation, step away from your religion, and Point your heart toward Jesus Christ. Step out. Step away and then step out on the measure of faith God gives you and trust Jesus Christ. Step out now. If you're here today, you've never stepped out on faith and trusted Jesus Christ, why not? You have an opportunity. How blessed you are to be in a church that preaches the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grace, not works. How blessed and fortunate that you are to be in a church that believes that, that preaches that. And now you have an opportunity. It may be the only one in your lifetime to, to like the Philippian jailer, say, what must I do to be saved? And the preacher says, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have that opportunity to step out by faith. I did, we dealt with a fellow over at Sunman one time. He said, Brother Tom, he just said Tom. I'd known him for years. He said, Tom, I don't know if I've got enough, safe, uh, enough faith to get to heaven. I've always been a little bit agnostic. I've, I want to believe, and I, you know, I think God is who he said he was, and Jesus is, is who he said he was, but I'm not sure I have enough faith. So I asked him, I said, are you willing to step out on the measure of faith you have and call on the name of Jesus Christ and ask you to tell him you're coming to him the best way you know how, and you're asking him to save you? He did that. I believe he's in heaven. Because he stepped out on the measure of faith God gave him. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the day. What are you waiting for? You see his glory. You see his goodness. And then you can see his grace. See it firsthand. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How can you not trust him? What a promise. What, a, what an inheritance. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Won't you come this morning? Job about God said this, said, which doeth great things past finding out. 
Yes, uh, wonders without number. His glory, His goodness, His grace. His grace is full of glory. His grace is full of goodness, full of mercy. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ephesians 1, 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. I couldn't be accepted as I am. As I was before trusting Christ, I could not be accepted. I, the only way that made me accepted is through that precious mediator that son of God uh, who was manifested in the flesh Jesus Christ that's why I'm accepted because of Christ because of Christ psalmist said in Psalm 144 3 now let me go to Job first Job 7 17 what is man that thou shouldest magnify him and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him Psalms 144 3 Lord what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest to count of him. My, my, my. Where are you at with God today? Man, you can't ignore the glory of God and the, the, the beauty of him. Beautiful for situation, the Bible says. Behold, John said in 1 John 3, 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It had to be God's love. There's nothing, there's nothing lovable about me. My wife cries really hard. But God loves me. I know God loves me. How can, how can God do that? How can God love me when I'm so unlovable? What manner of man is this? First Chronicles 29, 10, wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. He said, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand is to make great and again Give strength unto all. Now therefore our God we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And he reaches out to me. If he can save me he can save you. Many times I've talked to folks on Facebook. You come across I kind of troll for folks in trouble. You'll see people on there say I've had it. I'm at the end of my rope. I can't take anymore. I'll send them a little message say, if God can love me, I can love you. God loves you. God has a way for you. God will make a way for you if you'll let him. See, God puts that ball in our court. He did what he, did what he had to do to reconcile mankind himself. He became one of us. He sent his son in the form of flesh, a sinful form of sinful flesh. He wasn't a sinner. But he became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's hard for me to understand. But God would love me enough to reach out. And that awful price, I still don't get that. What a price he paid to give me an opportunity to be reconciled with him. For an opportunity for eternal life. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Why would I pass that up? Why would you pass that up? Everyone stand up this morning. I'm done. God wants you to come to him today. Won't you come? His glory, his goodness, his grace. Won't you share in that? Won't you appropriate that for yourself this morning? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Don't pass it up this morning, folks. 
won't you come? And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst drink the water of life freely. Won't you come? The altar is open for whatever reason. Won't you come this morning? 270. 270.